So you're going to come along with me uh, from my point of view today and we're going to have a chat. So I'm going to need to put this camera on my head and we're going to go pick up the Ferrari, which is not at my house. I just, I'll explain all that. Okay, first things first, getting in this thing. Okay. Why am I in the Porsche if we're gonna be talking about the Ferrari today? That's because I actually park it in another parking because this, as you can tell, is very tight. Um, so, I'm gonna go pick, we're gonna go pick it up. We take the Turbo S for that. And then, ooh, is that door, that door nearly came close on me. There is traffic all over the place in Monaco these days, but this is a very cool Twizy. It's got a very pearlescent paint. I don't know if that'll come off on camera for you guys. I haven't driven the Ferrari in a while. That's one of the things we're gonna talk about now, but I haven't driven it in, yeah, well, I mean, since I've had the Turbo S, I've been daily driving the Turbo S and uh, taking the Ferrari out for the odd occasion, which does make it feel even more special than it already did. Okay, that took longer than usual. Crazy traffic today. Quite a few Ferraris in this garage. Benny's Mustang, my Ferrari. All right, so it's got the charger, you can see, plug right there, which is convenient for the battery because I haven't driven it in a while. So it should start, no problem. Did I park where I can open the door? Yep. Now cross your fingers, guys. I'm gonna start it valves closed because else all the other car alarms are gonna go off. Yes, sir. Hello, Porsche. So the difference is this one doesn't need to go on the charger. So much easier to park as well. There we go. We close the sunroof. Touch out. Ah. Okay. Sport mode on. You know what, let's even go and race. All right, let's go. So the engine's cold now, so I can't go quick, but I can open the valves. I just can't go up in the rev range yet. We're gonna let it warm up slowly because it hasn't been driven in a while. Even without going for it, it makes such a good noise. While I can't go too quickly, you can tell we're in a limited zone and I need to let the car warm up. Good time to kind of introduce today's topic, um, which is I've now had this car for a year and a half, which is a pretty considerable amount of time. I mean, I didn't have in mind how long, oh, it's gonna become bright all of a sudden. I didn't have in mind how long I really wanted to keep this car, but it's now been a year and a half, pretty much. And how do I feel about it? You know, what's the uh, ownership review of having had, you know, been lucky enough to drive this car a lot you know I've done a lot of miles in this car I've had some great memories with this car so what is the conclusion and was it a good decision is it worth buying a Ferrari because it is a completely different experience to any other buying experience I've had at least in the past you know Lotus Alpine Audi R8 all these things I've been lucky enough to to own oh you hear that the Ferrari has been a completely unique experience and uh, yeah, I, I was wondering before I bought this, you know, is it something I should really be doing? What do I think about this? Uh, you know, I was looking for all sorts of reviews. So today we're going to talk about it. So this car over the last 18 months, it's been a weird 18 months because obviously of COVID and everything that's gone on there. I haven't been able to do everything I wanted to do with it. You know, I wanted to go on road trips with this car. I wanted to take it to Maranello. There's some things I still really want to do with it. And I hope I'll get the opportunity to. And it's actually one of the reasons I've been holding back on selling this car. So, you know, the first part of whether this was a good decision or not comes down to financials because lucky for me, the 430 Scuderia model in particular 
has actually held its value throughout COVID and the car market taking a bit of a hit. This model and specifically also in this spec has actually done pretty well. And I have had offers recently which were higher, considerably higher than what I paid for the car. So naturally, no matter how much you love a car, it does make you think, you know, is it worth uh, keeping the car? Especially now that I'm driving with it a bit less. But that's a whole different conversation. But one of the reasons I turned down those offers was because I haven't been able to do what I wanted to do with the car yet, unfortunately. Hopefully I'll get there eventually. The engine's starting to warm up a bit. It's incredibly low, so you need to be very careful on these speed bumps. This road I take a lot, so I know this road well. Oh, that noise! It's worth opening the windows a bit. That's with all the windows closed, by the way, that noise. Oh, we're still gonna let her warm up a bit. So, the simple answer is, I have enjoyed owning this car so much, much more than I even expected I would because of this. That, the character that this car has is so unique and you know through this YouTube channel I've been lucky enough to you know drive a few different cars from different brands but there is something so special about Ferrari. Now what has it cost me how many miles have i done what's it like living with this thing well it has cost me less than what you'd maybe think in a year and a half now it's not inexpensive especially because this is a 2009 model car i have had to put i think about 3,000 euros in maintenance in the car in total um, whether that's just little touch-ups here and there um, for example I redid um, some of the Alcantara on the inside little things like for example the paint starts crackling sometimes on the brake calipers so I redid the brake calipers so they are completely brand new service which was 1500 euros um, a few things like that so all in it's cost me probably ballpark figure around 3000 euros which you know, is a considerable amount of money, but it's not terrible for a year and a half of having some of this. Oh, which is pretty unreal. Now, I was lucky to buy this car, and you have to be really careful with Ferraris um, on which one you buy, because you can get some serious dogs, like you can get some cars which will never cause you problems. So this one, I bought with only 5% ceramic brake wear and 5% clutch wear and those two things have made the biggest difference for me because if you buy a car which may be slightly cheaper on the market but has 60-70% clutch wear that will end up costing you thousands tens of thousands to replace the brakes and the clutch so that's why you have to do your research really carefully before buying one of these and if you get a good one it shouldn't cause too many problems you know 18 months I've realized just how much of an occasion this car is every time you get in and drive it it still feels just as special on a on a beautiful day like today when you come and drive with this car it's something that you'll never really get used to at least that I've never gotten used to so would I do it again absolutely would I be careful about the specific model yes and the specific model down to even just the specific car and its history that's the biggest thing I learned coming out of this because having spoken to friends um, who have also bought uh, similar model year Ferraris and have had problems it is all down to the car you buy so that's been the, the main lesson for me it is definitely, um, you know, sometimes a little bit tricky as, as you saw, you know, I had to uh, adjust the parking situation because the parking at my house with the lift is a little bit complicated. So, you know, there are definitely things you need to think of with a car such as this that you don't with others. But 18 months on, this specific car, the 430 Scuderia, I absolutely love. Now, there are a few things. Now. For some reason, Ferrari decided to put on all of the buttons, so around the uh, air controls here, around the Manatino switch, this like weird glue stuff, which after, so it had just been redone when I bought the car. 
so you didn't notice it at all but after a while starts kind of coming unstuck and has this weird effect and that I'm starting to see now so I don't know why they did that but it's almost like just after a year it really started coming out now everything you touch is kind of sticky if you've been in one of these cars before you'll know what I'm talking about so that's one thing that I kind of didn't expect another thing is the front lights the front headlights start crackling after a while with humidity all 430s do that that's something I've had to deal with so I ended up tinted, tinting the lights so you see them less but all 430s have that and it's about I think four and a half thousand euros per headlight because they're carbon fiber to replace so I obviously decided not to go forward with that but apart from that it's been no problems the single clutch gearbox has been really easy to live with it's low but you can actually get around most places quite well because there's not a huge overhang over the front wheels overall it's been a pretty simple straightforward experience it wasn't even as hard as I thought it would be to get insured because most people who drive these leave them in collections so it's not a particularly hard car to insure either the boot is pretty big around front so I've been able to actually use this almost daily at points oh. oh that sound is unreal it's pretty spacious inside Wow What a car. It's hard to remember what you're trying to say when you got that sound right behind you. Oh my God, it sounds good. Sounds unbelievable. Yep, yep. That is why all of the little things like the sticky buttons, like the Alcantara had to redo, all make total sense once you just take it out for a drive like this. I wanted to make this video 18 months on because I was scared and I think a lot of people would be scared before buying you know their first supercar or Ferrari because you hear all these horror stories about the maintenance about how complicated it is and it puts you off a little bit and you think is this the right decision should I be doing this now and after having had it for 18 months speaking from purely my own personal experience I just wanted to make this video to say that it has been one of the most unbelievable things I've done one of the best decisions ever which in the end because the car's gone up in value won't have cost me anything in fact I will probably have earned something out of it so that's why I say it's so important to do your research first so that you can enjoy the experience and take the car for drives like this knowing you can have that peace of mind to really enjoy it and these kinds of cars are here to be used they're here to be enjoyed and you shouldn't be afraid of it if you've worked hard and you've ended up in a position where you can do this then please 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 you may only have one opportunity in your life go ahead and do it because it is truly truly special and I pinch myself all the time to remind myself how lucky I am this car has a Capristo exhaust that was one of the best things as well because it just amplifies the experience and turns it up to 12 even though the Scud is not a car you necessarily need to do that with let's turn it around and do that bit of road again because it's pretty exceptional headaches what have the headaches been Honestly, the main headache I can think of is people just looking at you weirdly, especially when you look like a 12 year old like me. Look at this bit of road, fish, the front end just goes in. Wow. Unreal. What a car. I haven't really had any headaches with it. 
to be honest, touch wood. <laughs> I don't know why I can touch, but I haven't really had any headaches. It's got the engine warning light on there because of the exhaust. Um, but apart from that, they're weirdly bulletproof. Again, I was scared at first when I bought it, but it's been fantastic. I've changed the look up a little bit, but apart from that, I haven't really touched it too much. And I haven't done any track with this car, um, just because, again, through the YouTube channel, I've been lucky enough to, when I go on track, have have uh, cars offered to drive. So that's been fantastic. So then I haven't had to put the wear and tear on this one. Um, but I would want to potentially one day. But the main thing is doing road trips. The car is, it has to be said, after 18 months, I've, 18 months I have learned that it is really bad on fuel, <laughs> really bad. But that's part of the game. I mean, you do need to put a certain budget aside, as I say, for the maintenance, you know, 3,000 euros, whatever that may be. And the fuel, I mean, if at one point I was daily driving this thing, I was doing maybe two tanks a week. And you know, it's about 140 euros a tank. So it adds up quickly. But apart from that, as I said, I could only recommend this. I think I'm gonna have a weird, do I have a weird? Yes, I, oh, that is horrible because I'm arriving at lunch now. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yes, that is the conclusion. After 18 months, I wanted to take the car, to be honest, I just wanted to take the car out for a drive and I thought I'd bring you along with me and I was thinking about it uh, before. It's now been a year and a half I've had this. Look at this, by the way. It barely, there's no lift on the 430 Scuderia and it just about makes it over that. It's not as low as one would think and this car's been lowered. But yeah, I want to take you along for that little drive and just uh, to, to give you my 18 month review, which is fantastic. I have enjoyed every single mile in this car and I hope to be able to enjoy more to come. And if it's not in this car, I hope to be able to, con to continue, sorry, enjoying miles in cars such as these. So um, now I feel very fortunate. And if you are someone who's watching this video, who's considering it, as I said, go for it. And uh, if you are not yet in the position where you are considering it, uh, let this be a, a source of motivation, hopefully for you, as um, videos on YouTube were for me to, uh, and still are for me, to look at these cars and aspire to them. And uh, all this to say that, you know, keep striving and keep pushing because it is worth it. That dream is, is uh, you know, not the monster that some people will make it out to be that it, you know, uh, it won't live up to your, your expectations and don't meet your heroes and stuff. I've met my hero and I couldn't be happier with it. So um, yeah, thank you for your support as, as always. And I hope you enjoyed this video and this new POV style. I'm really enjoying it. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers guys, bye-bye.